Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com. We got more. More space brains, even more space brains. <laughs> so this week uh, we see the release of the Primaris Tech Marine and also the Hammerfall Bunker, one Hammerfall Bunker in in this box right here. Uh, these particular miniatures, well, they're they're about what we expected, I suppose, uh, price wise. So the Primaris Tech Marine is thirty five dollars, kind of the GW independent character kind of pricing schema, so to speak. Uh, that you know. Uh, is it a good price? Is it a reasonable price? Well, that's a whole nother video altogether. So we're not even getting into that one, right? A uh, Hammerfall Bunker is $60 for this terrain piece, which also, I guess it's kind of curious. Like, I feel like other terrain pieces out there have been more like when it comes to Age of Sigmar uh, for like the trees for Sylvaneth. I had to buy a bunch of those and it was like $240 worth of trees. So I feel like that's on point, but you know, you know, you only need as many of these, I guess, is, uh, I guess you don't need to buy as many as you do for those trees. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of this, but as far as pricing goes, nothing out of the ordinary as to what we expected as far as that goes. Now, of course, you can always get your hobbies for less over at dicehead.com, amazon.com, or of course, hopefully your local game store, which, you know, can discount to at least 15% based on uh, the retailer agreement. So let's dive into these to kind of take a look at the spruce, uh, any gotchas that there might be, and go ahead and build it. So the Primaris Tech Marine is probably only one sprue. Yep, I kind of felt one sprue bouncing around in there. Instruction manual, decal sheet. I think this is the new decal sheet. Is that the, yep, no, that's the old one, 2017, and a 40 mil uh, base right there. And we're gonna take a look at uh, the instructions here for a second, but there's a sprue, yep, your standard. You know, we've seen it in the past where it's uh, one halvesy sprue and one halvesy sprue, and sometimes those go for 45 bucks. Um, sometimes if there's two characters in there, they go for 50 or 60, you know, when it comes to Ephraim Stern and the Custodes release uh, and the Sister of Silence earlier in uh, 2020, but this one is about the same size as those. However, it is only $35 for this uh, for this bad boy right here. So let's jump into the instructions and kind of get an idea for what's going on with this guy. So first off, it looks like it's just a standard front and back on the torso. Oh, the legs are already pre-assembled and posed. You don't have to put the front uh, greave on like with a lot of the primary stuff. So that's kind of cool. And he's just holding the uh, uh, just holding the, the little servo um, axe. The Messiah axe, I forget what that thing's called, but... And then the shoulder pad's separate, well, that's cool, so you can switch out the shoulder pad if you want. And then he's got a mecha tendrite uh, tendricle right there, and his heavy bolter servos or swivels up there like the Predator. It says to glue it, but I'm wondering if it will just stay put. And then you could kind of if you really wanted to, a little piece of terrain right there with a notch in it. It looks like he goes into the notch. And then he's doing that forward walking pose and boom, we got options. All right, cool. What do we got here? So either a pistol or the join the force, join the dark side loot kind of pose with, oh, this is cool. So check this out. So it's got what I would assume is two different supporting nubs here. One kind of kicks the arm out this way and one kicks and one keeps it a little closer. Like, like, like his arm is doing the same uh, commanding that uh, that servo right there. That's kind of cool. And then you've got a holster. This is holstered because I would imagine this is going to be the arm without the gun. Uh, another shoulder pad separate. So that's really cool. So you can put your chapter pad right there if you really want to. Uh, support, servo, claw, and then the arms outstretched. And then you put the head on. Head's completely separate. And this guy's really customizable. That's cool. And then over here, we've got, this is the one where he's holding the pistol. And there's an un, unholstered weapon. There's no way that weapon fits in that. That's, that's way too small. Realism is thrown out the window for me. Oh my goodness. Wait, is that a different head? There's two heads in here. Okay, cool. This is a lot of parts for such a little dude. Okay, all right, cool. I'm digging it. So let's take a look at the sprue here. It's sprue time. It's sprue time. So here it is. Uh, like I said, it is two halvesy sprues to make one full character sprue 
and you can indeed see most of the options on here so i guess they opted to kind of keep those legs together so they could fit everything else on here because he does have two different arm uh options two different head options right there and this for the most part is not a hundred percent their new kind of I call it easier to build where most of the halves are just kind of gonna, gonna glue together. You're not gonna have as many mold lines to trim. You will have mold lines to trim on this. You'll have some on the uh, the little uh, mechatendrite uh, wire right there, probably some on the backpack, definitely some on the servo arm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Definitely some on the legs, but not so much on the torso because the halves glue together. So that's kind of the new style, and this is kind of the old style. Uh, to that and then you're definitely gonna have some all around this axe that's unfortunate oof but either way uh cool little uh it's cool to see the options on special characters like this because normally you just get it one way like the chaplain one way well one head swap you know so actually having these kind of options really neat that they're stepping up their game like that okay so here he is uh goes together pretty well there was uh i like the notch on the little uh mecha tendrite back here but as i was assembling everything else i just kind of kept nailing it so i ended up using regular super glue on that uh for the most part i used a super thin tamia glue which of course i don't have here because i was assembling over at my table um but that being said you might want to consider using that because that's pretty much the only thing i use normal glue on uh, for this assembly right here this is a little precarious up here the way they want you to mount this little this front claw to the servo but you can see we did the whole like you know come join the dark side uh sort of pose and it's really cool how that kind of matches up to what he's doing with that um i guess is that a robot hand is that his robot hand i guess it is his robot hand uh went with just the normal uh space marine uh faceplate right there it had a skull kind of robot skull like almost like a terminator like from the movies I wasn't really down with that. I feel like that, that, that that's for chaplains. You know, this is this is a tech marine. This is what a tech marine looks like, at least to me. So forgive me if you don't agree with me, but that's the, that's the head I went with right there. And then I did went ahead and left. I did not glue this down so it could swivel and you could do the little uh, sound effects as you, you know, kind of scan the tabletop for uh, uh, enemies or whatever. I don't know. Real, realism aside, if that gun fires right there, you're going to blow out the eardrums. But I imagine space marines either can, you know, have uh, some sensors or something like that, or uh, there's some sort of other uh, technology technological advancement that makes uh, that makes that possible. Because otherwise, that's uh, that's going to be a feel badsy for that tech marine. But this is a nice little kind of thing here, very very akin to the uh, the predator or something like that. But overall, I, I like the kit. It goes together super quick. I uh, did not glue him down to the base, but uh, you know, ready to go if it needs to get painted. And remember, if you want to kind of match any of these terrain features or these terrain bits into the actual base themselves because you know if you don't put texture on here it's very noticeable or flock or something like that you can get some of this resin sand i used to use pumice from vallejo but it's really um the kind i like they don't make anymore but this resin sand and it kind of receded too much but this resin sand from liquitex is great uh, whatever you put down is exactly how it's going to end up sticking to the model here I still got this uh these little resin bits that i put on this base here this is all that same resin sand texture and you can't even tell that those are separate bits it looks like they're actually part of the base so that's really cool so this is just a normal bunch of you know, base ready to go right there and uh yeah so i definitely recommend doing that uh for this if it matches your army scheme so let's uh let's jump over to the hammer fall bunker now this was one I was kind of keeping a, a loose eye on because I was wondering how they were going to actually make this after putting together the Silent King, which it is, while it was the easier to build uh, kind of style of GW where everything is kind of on that one top plane and then everything underneath it is the back side or the back detail, right? That either gets glued into something or it's going to be hidden. I like that because it saves you time scraping down mold lines at the end of the day. It is more, a little bit more assembly work, but I feel like I just want to get on the tabletop faster. You know what I'm saying? So I do like that. And unfortunately, the Silent King took a very long time to put together. You can check out the video. Uh, it took about six hours, which was kind of crazy uh, if you start thinking about it. So this kit is kind of that same design where they, they had multiple sprues that just were designed to kind of geometrically kind of go together and form this assembly that took advantage of only having to produce the same part 
but get a you know larger cooler assembly um so as a matter of fact i see two sets of rockets right here but then i remember when i just flipped it over there was exhaust so i imagine one of these you're supposed to use for the exhaust and one of them you're supposed to use for the front and it doesn't matter because they'll be hidden on the inside even if there's rockets of the pod so it's kind of genius and when you start thinking about it how gw is able to actually do that and use the resources the best they can now <laughs> why they have to do that well i could definitely uh make another video about uh, about their business practices and how they treat people and all sorts of things like that. But we're here to talk about the actual product. So it's good that they have that profit margin. So you know, they can make these mistakes in other areas and still exist as a business because at the end of the day, it's all about your profit margin. But who cares about that stupid business stuff? We're just here to look at miniatures. So here is the assembly. Let me move Mr. Tech Marine here. And we're going to do some size comparisons here in a minute. Let's take a look at the assembly here. So it's saying that you're going to make four of these feet assemblies right here. So times four, right? And that seems pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's that whole like that one, everything's on one plane, you flip it over, it's either the insides or something where it's getting glued together. And that seems to be the case right here. Like that's the inside and that's getting glued together. You make four of these assemblies and then it looks like the top just kind of glues in. There's a little knob or something. I can't really tell right there, but it looks like some sort of attaching feature. And let's go in the proper order here. And then once you get your uh, kind of super structure together, these bunker uh, halves are gonna jump in. Oh, this is gonna be open topped on the bottom. And then you've got your turret ring, you've got your choice of weapons right here, which doesn't look like they slot in or are, I guess you could magnetize it. Uh, actually, I wonder if you could put a plate back there. That's gonna, okay, well, you're gonna take a look at that. And then over here, you've got the beginning of your turret. Again, they're, you know, left and right halves, left and right halves because they're on each sprue. Same, same deal here. Um, so one antenna, and then some other little servo things, a little thing on the front here, mounting bracket on the back. So I imagine some of these are extra, just gonna be extra bits that you're gonna have left over depending on which weapon you use. And then the rock, rocket pod goes together and yep, check that out right there. So the rocket pod actually goes into, or the rockets actually go into the pod because that's the exhaust, that's the front or vice versa because it's literally part number F20 and literally the same. So very cool. And then the ring goes down onto here and then you have your weapons and boom goes the dynamite, you're done. Well, let's look at one of these sprues. So here's the sprue. Again, you get two of these in this box and it has all the weapon options from the heavy bolters to the flamers to two of everything else that you're gonna need. And then like in that uh, instructions we saw, there's gonna be a servo, there's gonna be a rocket half, there's gonna be the antennas. Uh, there's an Aquila and that looks like you kind of line it up with these little brackets right here and there's another bracket here for the back and the sensor. So some of these will be extra and depending on what weapon, but everything else is going to get used because you actually need it twice. Now design wise, it says it was made and produced in the UK. So this isn't that Chinese resin um, as far as we know. But uh, but everything else right here. Oh, I wanted to check that. So this is a big chonky. So that looks like probably a, th mm, I would say 3 16th inch magnet would, if you drilled into that with a 3 16th inch magnet, like if you cared enough to actually swap out between the flamers and the heavy bolters, you could put a little piece of tin back here that it doesn't matter which way you put in the magnets. It, it, as long as you glue this in um, and glue this down, it should in theory, that's thin enough that if you use a big enough magnet, it'll seat and hold just fine, especially with all that area right there to actually kind of hold it in tension wise. So I think that's definitely doable. And from the looks of it, the bottom's gonna be open. So even if that plate of tin kind of falls out, that you could just kind of glue it back on. So that's probably, if we got time, I gotta look at the clock and see, cause we got a lot of kits to put together today. Um, I don't know if we'll get to that, but that is doable. I'll at least get the magnets out and check it for you. So let's actually get down to business and put this bad boy together. All right, so that was a fun little build. Um, I do have to admit, I didn't notice that the barrels weren't uh, drilled out on the heavy bolter, so you are gonna have to drill those out. Um, but every other detail is pretty much here. Unfortunately, on some of these areas where it wasn't kind of like a habsy type deal, there, you are gonna have some flash lines, but for the most part where you glue everything on, um, 
you know, you're not going to have as much flash or as much mold lines to kind of uh, clean off, which is really, really neat. And yep, the bottom is wide open. So you can put those tin plates in here uh, if you do want to magnetize. So what I did was I left one of these kind of loose. Now, this is pretty chonky. So I think what you can do is use a 3 inch magnet. I got some from Magnet Baron right here, but you can get them from wherever. I just like supporting Magnet Baron. One, because he's in the hobby. And two, because generally they're mostly uh, the same price as what you would find um, anywhere else. And at least, you know, you keep your money in the hobby uh, going around doing it, uh, paying it hobby forward. So that looks like that would fit in there just fine. So I have no worries about that. Um, but then on the back here, I would take a tin, a piece of tin. You want to make sure it's fair, so don't get aluminum. Uh, they sell these in big, big sheets. Like if you saw our videos on, or actually I probably put them in the top here, at least one of them, like how to uh, store your uh, uh, store your miniatures. So you get a big uh, one by one foot square piece of tin, and they sell them one by one. Or if you can go up to your um, you know Lowe's or Home Depot, they sell them at four by six sheets for like two or three bucks. Usually, well, I guess uh, I guess last time I went, it was like eight dollars. But they're in the HVAC aisle. You just kind of got to look around, maybe ask uh, somebody about them because they usually store them vertically. But get you some good tin snaps and oh, away you go. You can cut this down, glue this stuff in anywhere for where you need it to be flat. Um, and that's usually the most expensive part of magnetizing stuff is the, uh, the tin snaps to actually cut through uh, the steel or the tin, right? Um, so there's that and you know, I don't know if you really need to do that. If you just want to be a completist, you don't want to decide right now. Um, but there is that now the one thing i do like about this turret is that the uh the rocket pods actually rotate because there's little nubs and you connect them in there so just be very careful when you glue that uh so you get that range of motion putting the aquilas on just kind of line them up a uh, square like perfectly centered inside of these little vents right here and that'll work just fine this is all open so it rotates you can actually put different things on here if you really wanted to uh, just kind of depending. I'm sure we'll see some variants of this turret at some point. And something else I noticed too, let me zoom out a little bit, is uh, I don't know how many of you out there played the Dawn of War games at this point, but they used to have this thing where you call in reinforcements and a drop pod would like land, you know, on on a little piece of terrain that they had built into deployment zone. It looked very similar to this, a little bit bigger version, but this sure is heck just lock, actually locks in uh, here to to the little um, the little ring so I'm sure if they made another piece right there and they can make some sort of uh, Terrain piece and maybe sell the drop pod together with this or something That'd be pretty neat because it, you could start having your base, you know having your uh, Backfield kind of start looking a lot like uh, like the dawn of war or something like that, but um, you know, it's such a great game the Last one didn't do so well, but uh, dawn of war 2 actually still doing well I think they put out DLC about mm, four or five years ago, which is Kind of crazy if you think about it because that was that game dawn of war 2 was published i think in 2011 so the fact that they put out dlc five years later so uh, well it's still popular so let's take a look at some sizes here uh before we go so here's the tech marine here's the bunker i already showed you how it compares up to um you know like something something like the drop pod but there you got special characters which you're probably gonna have a lot of a lot of those or maybe you know it's just some troopers or something like that running around and then as far as the tech marine goes he pretty much lines up good to go you know a 40 mil base with uh with the rest of the special characters out of the indominus box and then of course if you want to compare him to some of the other stuff that came out last year he definitely lines up pretty well with um, the fist on too, so that's kind of cool to see. So other than that, I think it's a I think it's a fun little kit. Um, Sixty dollars US, of course. You can always get your hobbies for less at DiceHead.com, Amazon, or hopefully uh, your local game store as well. So that's it for this one. But before you leave, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.